Hey guys, Omar here, coming to you live in classic chrome. I wanted to make a quick video on how to shoot video with the Fuji X-T20. A couple people seem to want to know how to shoot video. I am by no means a videographer, but I have been shooting video with the camera, 4K, testing it out. So I'll give you the basics basics. This isn't like a comprehensive. Maybe when I get better in the future, I'll do a super how to be awesome at videography with the Fuji X-T20 video. So let's start with our options for shooting video. The first thing is you have to decide the quality of your video. So if you go to the, your menu and you go to the little camera, your movie mode, you can shoot in 4K, 24 frames a second. And if you don't know what that means, 24 frames a second is like, um, kind of what film looks like. Like if you're watching a movie, if you shoot 30 frames a second, that's more like real life. You know, if you want to shoot sports or if you're watching the newscast, that's about 30 frames a second. YouTube is mostly 30 frames a second. This looks a little bit more real. Also, if you want to shoot at 1080p, which is full HD, you have some options available to you. One of them says 60 frames a second. I'm rounding up there. Use this one if you want to record at a faster frame rate and you want to slow down your video uh, this gives you a better option for smoother slow motion later. So 60 frames a second. If you try to shoot regular video, it's going to look like hyper real, which is strange. You get super soap opera effect. 30 frames a second. By the way, the 25s and the 50s, those are for different video formats. For the most part, you'll be shooting in 30, 24, 60. Uh, so stick to those. Now, if you're shooting 4K, it takes up a lot of space. It's about seven to 800-ish megabytes per minute of video, so almost a gig per minute. And if you're shooting in 1080p-ish, uh, these guys are about 250 to 300-ish megabytes per minute. Uh, so if, if space is an issue, think about that. Also, you can look up some YouTube videos and like the quality between these two you know, if you're watching on a smaller screen is really not noticeable at all, okay? Then you have some other options here. You could shoot at 720p at 60 frames a second. So that also will save you some space. I would say start with, if you're just gonna be shooting around and fooling around 1080p at 30 frames a second, start and pick that one, okay? All right, here's our movie options. The top one will tell you that you're shooting at HD 30 frames a second. Then you have some other options here. Uh, autofocus mode, you have multi-area, just keep it on area. 4K movie output, uh, you can record 4K movies to a card. I use regular, uh, I know they recommend like faster speed cards. I use regular OSD cards and they've been working fine. You can record to a card or you can have an HDMI cable out to record to an external recorder. Uh, mic level adjustment, you can see Hey, I'm talking. You could see your levels on there. You cannot see this level while you're recording, which is a little annoying. So you have to check beforehand. I have it set to three, which is the default. It's been working fine. And then th on the side of your camera, you have a little mic output. You can d decide if you want it to be the microphone, like an external microphone, or you want it to be something like a little shutter release. So those are your movie options. Now, by the way, I'm keeping my ISO on auto for these tests because that's just another factor that gets conf too confusing. If you're an advanced user, you can of course pick your, um, you can pick your ISO and you know, decide where you wanna live on that. But for the purposes of this, we're just teaching people how to just take video right away. Keep it on auto ISO for now. So on the top of your camera, on your Fuji X-T20, you have a switch which switches everything to auto. So the first type of video you can take is full auto mode. One thing, so I'm going to hit record, and basically this just means the camera picks exposure for everything. So you will get exposure shift. If you notice in bright scenes, it will sort of calculate and exposure will shift around. So it goes from bright to dark, it figures it out, and then sort of shifts around like that. How you can uh, adjust your exposure if you're in full auto mode with that switch to auto is the exposure compensation wheel. So for example, if this is my shot and I want it to be darker, I just change the exposure compensation wheel to make the exposure what I want. So if you're noticing in the back of your camera that something's too dark or too bright, you could just flip the wheel and that'll take care of that in full auto mode. Now, when you're in full, full auto mode, the camera does not care that you have manual focus on. So right now, if I, I have the camera set to manual focus, 
the switch, but if you're in full auto, it totally will flip. Uh, it'll take care of exposure and also focus. It will auto focus on everything. You can use the touch screen on auto here. If it says shot, just know as soon as you touch, it's going to start focusing and recording, okay? So let me hit the screen, but you can't hit the screen to stop, which is weird. So you actually have to hit the shutter to stop. Then it says storing. At the top, it tells you how much time you have left to record. And once you start recording, it'll tell you uh, like a little countdown of how much record time you have. This I think is 10 minutes. If you're shooting 4K, you have about 15 minutes uh, if you're shooting 1080p. All right, in super, in full auto mode, I know I'm in full auto mode because I see this here. A couple things to note. One is face detection is automatically on. So it will try to focus on faces that it finds. Um, so that's one thing to know that's a little annoying. You cannot switch off face detection mode on there. So that's something that's in full auto. It is by default looking for faces. So that's mode number one, auto. It's a great mode if you're just completely going to do selfies of yourself talking. Uh, totally works fine. The next mode is switch off that auto switch at the top and flip it to uh, flip your shutter dial to A and your aperture ring to A. And you will be in what's in the photo world known as P mode. We already learned that in another video. But now it actually says auto again. So just so you know, if you have your lens on the A and your shutter dial on the A and you switch to the video mode, which is this dial here, you'll see auto again. They're a little different though. You'll see if you flip this switch, crazy full auto mode, face detection comes on. If you flip and you have A and A set on the lens and the camera, then you're in kind of P mode, but it says auto. It doesn't say P mode, okay? How do I adjust exposure? Here, remember, if I go to like a brighter scene, the camera will on P mode also take care of exposure. It will shift. But if you're on one scene like this, you can use the exposure dial as well, the exposure compensation dial. Your shutter dial will not work if it's recording and your aperture dial will not work if it's recording. So your only option here is the uh, exposure compensation wheel. If you have the, I know the Fuji X-T2, you can actually now with a firmware update, you can um, change ISO. I tried to change ISO by making it different buttons, but you can adjust ISO while shooting. Okay, the next mode that you can shoot in is shutter priority mode. This means you pick the shutter speed and the camera will pick the aperture, okay? So you'll see a little S there. Now, if you're an awesome videographer, you totally already know this, that your shutter speed wants to be half of your, oh, sorry, double your frame. See, I'm not a videographer, you can tell. You want, it, you want it to be double your frame rate. So for example, we're shooting at 30 frames a second, so that means we want 60 to be our shutter speed. Is this a 100% you have to do all the time? No, but the reason videographers do this is because if you shoot motion, you get like a nice little, like a, a nice little blur, which our eyes sort of calculate to be normal in a movie. Okay, so you see there's a the little blur. If you set your shutter speed, let me set it up nice and high here. It's gonna be a little underexposed, but 250. If I move now on the screen, like you see too many fingers. It just looks weird and juddery. You can play around with you can play around with that. If it's kind of dark, you can still go to 30 and you get like super motion. You see it's like very motiony, but that's okay. If it's an emergency and it's dark, you could still go to 30. If nothing is moving in your subject, like bats here, it doesn't even matter. You could shoot at any shutter speed. Just get a good exposure and shoot video. It's when you introduce motion that this whole shutter speed thing matters, okay? Videographers will put their shutter speed at double the frame rate. So if you shoot at 24 frames a second, you can make this 50 by using this wheel first and then turn your, your dial to sort of put it exactly where you want. If you wanna adjust in this shutter mode, again, you could use the exposure compensation wheel. The shutter, changing the shutter doesn't do anything while it's recording. 
and changing the aperture does nothing as well. Okay, so you're limited to exposure compensation to switch your exposure while recording. If you're recording in the shutter priority mode, your exposure will shift. If you notice, we go to bright parts. If we go to dark parts, the camera will take care of you. If you don't want your exposure to jump around like an old video camera, you're going to have to switch off any of this. Uh, you have to go into full auto mode, and so I'll show you that. Okay, full manual mode. So to, to shoot in full manual mode, that means you do not want this sort of exposure jumping around, you know, going higher and lower. The only way to do that is to go, first thing is you gotta get off auto ISO. So you have to pick an ISO that's sort of high enough. So let's pick 6400 for this dark office. Uh, next, your shutter has to be where you want it. So let's say it's at 60. And then you have to turn on your lens. If you have a little switch, you have to take it off the A. Your exposure compensation wheel will no longer work because now your exposure is the triangle, these three, okay? So, but if you go to brighter parts of the scene, they will not get darker. You have to control your exposure now using, you don't wanna change shutter too much, remember, if you're shooting video. So you'll have to use the aperture wheel on your lens to sort of darken the scene. If, you're, if your lens doesn't have, you can, of course, use your dials to change. So now you can sit there and sort of control the exposure using the aperture wheel. You, of course, can control using um, shutter speed, but we already talked about that, why that's not a great idea for motion. You cannot adjust ISO while you're recording. So here, we're, we're recording now. I hit my ISO button, it cannot adjust. So you can only adjust while recording on manual with your aperture ring and your shutter dial. So it will, it will adjust with those two. Um, if you know what you're doing and you wanna shoot manual, you can totally do that with the camera. Let's talk about focusing on the camera. First, keep it on autofocus continuous. If you have a center focus point, and if you notice there's less center focus points and you can change the size of your focus point in video. If you have a center focus point set, the camera will grab onto what you want to grab onto. Oh, come on, focus. Now I've noticed the focus on the Fuji X-C20 can go from snappy to super artsy slow. Whoa, super artsy slow to I'm confused to being the best focus I've ever seen. But right now I have it on continuous focus, center focus point, and the camera does a decent job of just grabbing, 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 so, and now let's start recording. Great, so it's on the buildings and my center focus point hits bats and it grabs. I'm panning, picks the buildings, I'm gonna pick back, center focus point, grabs. It will vary how fast it grabs. Sometimes it's super cinematic, slow and beautiful. Sometimes it's like snappy. There is no way to adjust that sort of pull focus you want, okay? So that's something to think about. It does the job. Great, great, great. Okay, so that's center focus point, continuous focus. Just the camera's just doing, so now it will continuously, you saw how snappy that was on that time? It kind of just, whoop, whoop, whoop. That was a little slower. Come on, papa. Come. Yeah, you see? So sometimes it's like, wapa. Wapa. Now let's say you have manual focus set for the camera. So now on my lens, if I turn the, um, the focus ring, I actually get a zoomed in look, okay? If I'm recording and I hit manual focus, you will not get the zoomed in look. I'm turning my manual focus right now, okay? But you can, if you're good, you can pull focus. That means you're on the buildings right now and you can totally turn that lens you know, until you want. My eyes are going. Okay, sorry, let me try that again. Awesome pull focus, take two. Uh, you know, we're on the buildings and then you're like, -ni 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 -ah, right there, you know? So you, you know, you can totally do your own focusing if you don't want the camera to do it. That's cool. Again, I think it's uh, to get this option right here, which is checking your focus before, you have to go into, oops, stop recording, stop recording. You have to go into your menu and go to your AFMF and just say, have this, um, 
the focus check have that on. You can also have the touch screen available, which is cool. So you can be in manual focus and then all of a sudden you got an autofocus option available to you. So now you see it won't focus back there, but you can still focus with the touch, which is great. So that's one way not to have the camera hunt. You can leave it on manual focus and touch whenever you need to touch on something and it will focus on that. I mean, like I said, it's, it, it goes from awesome to hunting to more tests needed on autofocus. What's up, Bruce? What's up, Bruce? <laughs> Bruce, meet Bruce. We have the touch screen. Let's turn this touch screen to autofocus. So you saw how slow that little autofocus was, but what's great is if you touch, if you're filming and you touch focus, come on, touch Bat's face there. It's a little quicker. He made me a liar. Let's see, focus. Focus, focus. Oh, you're confused. Focus, focus. Don't get tired on me. This is the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Your lens performance may differ, but you see it hits it pretty much every time. If you're shooting video, you have face detection available to you in 1080p. If you jump up to 4K, this will be grayed out. You won't see it at all but you can do face detection on or off in 1080p, 720p, which is totally cool. You can shoot in the different uh, film simulations, which is great. You can start, you know, the Batman looks cool in that. One thing I noticed, if you're doing vlogging like this, you have to wait about four or five seconds before it sort of sees your face and then you can start talking. I'll show you an example of that, okay? Let's try that now. Hey guys, this is a face detection test. I bet it has not found, it probably found my face now. There's my face. Two, three, four. <laughs> so I told you. So as you can see, you just, just if you're gonna do an update or kind of vlog, just have it on face detection, count, you know, like I said, like five, and then you can start and you pretty much will be locked on your face pretty good. But then the beginning, never. So just think about that. Two, three, four. Hey, how do I look in Velvia? We're gonna give you all the film simulations in this video, <laughs> just to annoy you. Let's talk about face detection really quick. It's not the best. I find that it hunts a little bit too much if you have things in the background. If you're in front of a gray wall or something very solid, it does fine. It totally will stay locked on you because you're the only piece of contrast. But behind me, I've got like stuff going on. I have a lamp back there and I find it wavers a little bit. Like it doesn't know, it keeps thinking like, am I a face? I'm, I mean, look, I'm a face. So something to think about using face detection. So I'm gonna switch to center focus point instead of face detection and see how that works. Ah, here I am in Agros. Do I look artsy? I changed the focus point to center and took face detection off, hopefully, because of my confusing background, it'll be less confused. No, no, sepia. Hey, here we are in Ostia Soft. All right, guys, so that does it, that wraps it up. I hope that helped you guys get a little better in your video shooting. If you have some questions or comments, leave them below and we'll try to help you guys out. All right, see you next time. Mm -hmm.